want to show you guys how to make a frequency polygon on StatCrunch. Also, I want to work on a cumulative frequency polygon or table. And also, I want to do a an ogive, a frequency ogive. All right, so let's get to it. We'll start with the frequency polygon. This is a frequency polygon. It's lines connected by dots. And at the bottom, it's the midpoints. All right, so I want to work with this question right here, Guinea index. It says the Guinea index is a measure of how evenly income is distributed within a country ranging from zero to 100. An index of zero suggests income is distributed with perfect equality. The higher the number, the worse the income inequality. The data below represent the Guinea index for a random sample of countries. All right, so we have the United States has a Guinea index of 45 and Sweden has the lowest Guinea index. All right, there's some directions down here. It says with a first class having a lower class limit of 20 and a class width of five. Okay, so the thing about this frequency polygon is it comes from classes. It comes from a frequency distribution of continuous data. This is continuous data. So you need lower class limits, upper class limits, you need class widths. And this tells us that the class width should be five with the first lower class limit of 20. Let's use StatCrunch. Let's go over here. We'll open my math lab. We'll go to StatCrunch, figure out what question that was. That was number 27 from 2.2. Let's go to data sets from your textbook. Chapter two. 2.227 should be guinea index and it is guinea index so okay here we go in order to make the frequency polygon we need the midpoints okay so let's first of all this is the raw data here we need to bin this data all right so we're gonna put this data we're gonna classify it into separate classes we're gonna figure out each data point where do they go what class are they in Let's do that by going to data, bin, use fixed bins or fixed width bins. Let's select any index. We'll start it at, what did it say to start at? 20 and then five. We can double check that. Let's go back. Yeah, lower class limit of 20, class width of five. All right, so we are going to create classes or bins with the first one starting at 20 and a class width of five, we're gonna press compute. Notice that we're gonna include the left endpoint. In here, it says that the bin edges include the left endpoint. So let's press compute. All right, so this is the classification for each one of these numbers, like 24.8 belongs to the bin from 20 to 25. Now it's interesting to note that the number 25 belongs to 25 to 30 because it's coming from the left value. The left endpoints are included as we select it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is create the frequency distribution from this. So I'm gonna go to stat, tables, frequency, select binny or binny, ginny, guinea. <laughs> we'll select bin or guinea. And then we'll go to whatever we want. Frequency, we don't need, really need the relative frequency. We just need the frequency distribution right now. Later on, we might want the cumulative frequency, but let's take the frequency. I'm gonna, let's see. That's pretty much it. I'm just gonna compute, see what I get. That's it. There's your frequency distribution. Now, we need the midpoints because if you look back at the definition of a frequency polygon, it says something about a midpoint somewhere. It says it is constructed by plotting a point above each class midpoint on a horizontal axis at a height equal to the frequency of the class. So we need the class midpoints, right? So if I go back here, I don't have the class midpoints here, but I can calculate them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, control C, and then go right here, press control V and think about it. Do we need classes at the beginning or end? Let's go back to the frequency polygon again and say two additional, look at that, two additional line segments are drawn connecting each end of the graph with the horizontal axis. If you look at this value right here, it goes to zero. This value here goes to zero. 
So this really has one, two, three, four, five, six classes, but there are eight points. Those those last two points. So I need a point before and after my data. So when I go here, I'm gonna put a zero here and a zero here. Now I need the midpoints. What's the midpoint? 22.5, 27.5, 32.5. Thirty-seven point five, forty-two point five, forty-seven point five, fifty-two point five, fifty-seven point five, sixty-two point five, and then sixty-seven point five, and then up here, what would the last would be seventeen point five? Okay, so now I have all of the data that I need for the frequency polygon, and I'm ready to go. So now all I gotta do is go to graph, charts, columns. Now let me close this again. Let me call this the midpoint. And let's call this what frequency. Make our graph look a little bit better. So now when I go to graph, chart, col columns, I'll, I wanna graph the frequencies, but the row labels need to be the midpoints. And I want to change this plot to points with connected lines. And that's it. Just press compute now. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Notice it's labeled nicely. We've got midpoint here, frequency here. It's going down to zero on the edges. If you want, you can create a title and call it Guinea Index for Countries. And here you can say frequency polygon press ok we've just labeled everything and that's it now if I want to I can right click this press copy go back to Excel and let's see where can I put it here press paste resize it there you go there's your frequency polygon Or that may have been the frequency distribution. I'm gonna put the frequency polygon down here somewhere. I was supposed to put the frequency distribution up here. This is the graph. This is the frequency polygon. But the, before we made the graph, we had to make the frequency distribution here. So if I go back here, move this out of the way, there's the frequency distribution. Let me copy that. So there's that. Go back to Excel, press Control V if you're using a PC, and there is the frequency distribution. Let's see if we can fit that in. There it is. All right, style that. All right, now that right there is how you construct a frequency polygon. If you want to do a, cons a cumulative frequency polygon something a very important observation is that let's see what's important here so this is a cumulative frequency polygon notice that it keeps going up they call that an ogive for the cumulative frequency polygon now i want to make a cumulative frequency uh, distribution from this data right here so i'm going to go to 2.2 number 28 and notice this at the bottom we have certain characteristics here that we have to kind of meet. So I'm going to go to the data set, number 28, close this one, go to stack crunch on number 28. And what are we trying to do here? What exactly are we trying to do again? We're trying to make a cumulative frequency distribution following these criteria, starting at 35,000 and then going to 5,000. Cumulative frequency distribution. So if we go here, we do have to bin the data because we're trying to make a frequency distribution and we need to specify the width and stuff like that. So we go to data, bin, we'll use that. We'll click this, income, starting at 35,000. We'll go to bin 5,000, including the left endpoint. Press compute, you get that. Now we get to make the frequency distribution by going to stat tables frequency, stat tables frequency. Click, uh, let's see, let's click the bin. And what do we want? We want, if we want both of those, we can get both of those. We can just press, well, are we trying to find the cumulative this time? Cumulative frequency, cu cumulative relative frequency. 
So we got those cumulative right there, so I'm going to copy that. Bring it in. Alright, copy. Come over here, press Control V, resize it. There, looks good. If we want to style it, we can. Alright, now that looks good. We got our cumulative frequency distribution. Notice that these numbers keep getting bigger, 2, 12, 17, 32, 38, 47, 50, 51. And the relative frequencies, they end at 1 because they keep getting bigger also, ending at 1 because that's 100% of the data. Now what else should we do here? Let's get an OGIVE going. So I underlined something very important for OGIVE. An OGIVE is basically a frequency polygon that is for the cumulative data. So that thing that we just did right there, we're going to use these numbers, these frequencies for the OGIVE. But we're going to take these right endpoints this time. We don't want the midpoints anymore because it's cumulative. So we want to take the right endpoint now. It's everything to the left of it. So we should start on the very edge to the right. So that's what this says, upper class limits. It is constructed by plotting points whose X coordinates are the upper class limits and the Y coordinates are the cumulative frequencies. All right, let's do that. Let's make this OGIVE for this same data set. We're going to do kind of what we did before. We're going to go to StatCrunch and I'm going to copy these here. Actually, I don't need I don't need the cumulative. Let me just edit this. Get rid of the cumulative. Just click that one. And now I'm going to grab these things here. I'm going to press Control C. Now I'm going to put it on the second one because I think we have to start at zero. Now watch what I do. I'm going to grab this if I can. I need to, huh, what's a good way to do this? It's kind of annoying that I have to do this, but I'm going to delete all this stuff. Oops. Well, should be 50,000, right? 50, 1, 2, 3. 55, 1, 2, 3. 60, 1, 2, 3. 65, 1, 2, 3. 70, 1, 2, 3. 75, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And then we'll create a new one down here, which is 35000, because that's what would be for, that would be before 40,000, according to that pattern. And that's it. Now do the same thing we did with the cumulative frequency distribution. That's it. So we go, what did we do before? Graph, chart, columns. Well, maybe we can do this. Let's say, I don't like having var 6 and var 5, maybe cumulative frequencies. And then over here, what were these? These were the upper class limits. And then we can do now graph charts, columns. We're going to graph the cumulative frequencies. The row is going to be the upper class limits. And we want to, we want points connected with lines. And that's pretty much it. Press compute and there you have it. That's a, that's an OGIVE. In fact, if we want to, we could say, what are we doing? Income here. So income. Can say OGIVE and if you want to put like a little title there you can right click it press copy image go back to Excel and press control V there it is all right so let's see format it a little bit to make it fit nicely and there you have it frequency polygons and OGIVEs cumulative remember OGIVEs on the very bottom it's the upper class limits right upper class limits for an OGIVE and it's the cumulative it should keep going up and up and up that's an OGIVE and the regular frequency polygon what's on the x-axis for these for the regular frequency polygon it's the midpoints it should say that right here I should I should really underline midpoints right there all right that's it hope that helps